Okay, we're gonna move on to the setup menu. Here there are five of them. So let's begin with the first one. Record functions, the very first record function and card folder select. Um, I think it's important that you see these icons, the, the video, photo video icon, then you have the second one is just a photo icon. Um, let's just go to the photo icon, which is the second one. This is where I usually live, okay? Standard is just a standard recording to, 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 the, to whatever memory card is there. It's not gonna change anything, it's not gonna make a copy of anything, it's just gonna put it there, okay? If you do auto switch card, it means that if you do have two memory cards in your camera, okay, you can put CF Express and an SD card. If you have both in the camera, then if you, if you choose auto switch card, it will automatically switch. Once one card is full, it will switch over to the second card and you will have more space to continue shooting without having to run to your back and change the memory card. Very nice and very handy. Record separately and record to multiple. Those are your backup options, okay? Which obviously, is, if you're a professional photographer, that means a lot. Record separately, let me switch to that one. Record separately means that it's going to record two separate formats to the memory cards. So one memory card could be raw and the other memory card, let's say the SD card, could be your backup and that one will be large JPEG. Um, you could do medium JPEG on the CF Express and small JPEG on the SD card. You can do whatever. As long as they are two different, you want two different formats recording in each card, then you, you choose record separately. If you want the same exact file and the same resolution and format recorded as a pure backup of it, as an exact copy, then you go to record to multiple. So record to multiple for me is what I usually do. It is set to raw and the second is set to raw. If I am at an event, like let's say I'm shooting a wedding or something and I wanna do a slideshow the same night, okay, at the reception, if you do that, I don't really do that anymore, but, if, but I used to. I would, I would go to record separately and then I would do raw on, the, on one card and then I would do small JPEG on the next card. Why would I do that? Because if you take the SD card out, if you shot the whole wedding and you have an SD card there and it has all the small JPEGs, you can plug that into your computer immediately and in one second all your files show up, you can quick select, you can make quick corrections. All the software takes very little time to process because the files are so small and it just makes it so quick to be able to get a, a slideshow ready and show it to your clients the same day. It's very exciting and people love it. Also, if they if the client wants to take it to take it with them on their honeymoon and you need to give it to them or upload it to them or whatever, by doing it with a small JPEG, it will be a five minute transfer instead of a two hour transfer, uh, which is terrible, especially when you wanna just go home, okay? Uh, file number continues, self-explanatory, file name is important. In this one, um, I do have my file name to my name. I don't, let the, I don't let the camera have the file name that comes when you buy the camera and it's out of the box because it's a generic name. When I, see fo when, I see, when I have memory cards thrown all over the table and I have jobs with more photographers putting more memory cards on my table and I put on a memory card I want to know that the files that I that show up on Adobe Bridge or Lightroom or Capture One have the, the first part of the file has my name on it. So I know I took these and somebody else took those. So if I'm shooting with a team, we go to file name and I ask them that to put their first name and their last name. So the, it's, it's only a four digit thing. So you, I, I put R for Roberto, Val for Valenzuela. And then I know that the files are going to be called R Val and then the, the file number and then the extension, so CR3 or JPEG. Now, please note that if, you were, if you're wondering why when you put your first, your first letter and you put your other three letters, why the first letter disappears, that's because you are in Adobe RGB. If your camera is set to Adobe RGB, it's going to basically get rid of the first letter that you put the R, in my case, R, and it will replace the R with an underscore. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. So the file name here will be underscore V-A-L and the R is basically, basically just disappears, okay? If you are in sRGB, which you should never be, um, then the file will be exactly how you typed it, R-V-A-L, okay? So that's what that is. Don't ask me why. I don't know why they decided that if you're in Adobe RGB, you're gonna have 
an underscore at the beginning of every file. And if you are in sRGB, it will, it will not have the underscore, it will be whatever. Uh, so that's, that's to, to be able to change your name of the file name, you go to change user settings one, and then that's what you can, you know, it says RVAL. And if you want to, um, if you want to change user settings number two, you can do it here. And what is that? Well, the second setting is allows the, the allows the camera to not only record the name as the file name, but it also gives you an extension of the file size. So let's say you have a large JPEG or a medium, it would put an L for large, an M for medium, and S for small. Uh, so this is if you want to know which files are what size, and you can just see it on the name, then you would go to user settings too. I really don't care for that, I just shoot in raw, so I don't need it, but I'm sure other people do, so that's what that is. Format card, guys, um, you should let format card be here and let it be there, okay? Don't put it on the favorites menu, don't go to the star and put format card there. I know it's convenient to be able to format cards, but that's exactly the point. It should not be convenient to reformat your memory card. You should, you should make it as hard as possible on yourself to do that. Uh, I've seen people put a format card on the on the favorites menu and accidentally reform, reformatted their card. So that's bad. Um, auto rotate is one that I actually look for. It's very important and it's one of the things I do as soon as the camera comes out of the box. The way it works is you have these three options. You have rotate on the camera and on the computer. The second option is rotate the photos on the computer only, but do not rotate do not rotate them on the camera. And then the third is just don't do anything, okay? The difference between these three are the following. Rotate on camera and on computer. It will basically rotate a vertical photo so it can be, it can, it can show the way you hold the camera this way. So if you're holding the camera this way with a screen like this, the vertical photo will be rotated to show a vertical format in that horizontal screen. I hate that because because if you take a great vertical photo and you want to show it to a client, you have to look at it. You have to look at it by as you have to basically get rid of 40% of this of the of the space of the screen because he rotated your vertical photo in a horizontal screen. So you basically get this little piece to show the photo. I don't want that. So that's why I choose the second option, which is rotate the photo. So if it's vertical, make it make it stand vertical. So yeah. So when you put it on Adobe Camera Raw or Bridge or whatever, and and it's and, and the photo's vertical, you want you want it to be vertical on your window, okay? And and in the camera, you if you choose the second option, it will actually not rotate it on the camera screen. That means that if you take a vertical photo, it will it will you're gonna have to view the photo by turning the camera vertically or then you will have access to the full vertical picture using every pixel of that screen instead of cropping out the left and the right sides because it's trying to rotate it to vertical. So that's, I recommend you leave it on this one, but that's just my opinion. I like to see my photos at, uh, in, in the entire screen. So if it's a horizontal picture, it's gonna show the entire photo horizontally. And if it's a vertical picture, then it's gonna show the entire photo vertically, but it will not, crop out or leave out any pixels in the screen to show the pictures. Okay, so that's cool. Let's go to the next one. Um, add video rotate info is if you are shooting video for let's say Instagram stories and you're shooting it vertically, again, you're taking your video vertical because that's the format of Instagram stories, then you want to be able to put this on your EXIF data because then when you export the file to your computer or, or your phone or whatever, it's going to re tell the computer, show this photo vertically. Okay, so it's going to show you, it's going to be the full width of your iPhone basically, instead of trying to show a horizontal version in a vertical screen. Okay, so you don't want that. So if you are shooting for Instagram stories and you want to show the full iPhone, vertically iPhone, you want to show the whole thing this way, then enable that one, and then it will tell the computer, okay, this is a vertical video taken in vertical format, display vertically. Okay, uh, time zone. The only one, the only thing I have to say about time zone is make sure that when you are doing time syncs with your team, that you are also on the same time zone. Boy, has that been a problem so many times where I we have the perfect syncing, we're all at 9, 9 a.m. ready to go, 
And then we, fo we forgot to check that somebody was in Mountain Time, another one was on Eastern Time, another one bought the camera on eBay and was on Africa Time, I don't even know. So you wanna make sure that you are on the same, um, on the same time zone. Okay, let's move on to setup number two. Very quickly, language is gonna be, of course, whatever language you want, video, help tags small if you're young, if you are old and you're losing your sights, go to large. Beep, I keep it disabled because why would you want beep, 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 beep everywhere you go? You don't want it. The headphone volume, I think the default is great, the power savings great, and the eco mode, I just leave it off. Uh, the power saving, you could choose how quickly you want your display to turn off if, if it's not active. Same thing with your screen, same thing with your viewfinder. So that's all pretty self-explanatory. Let's go to number three. Very easy, very quick, screen viewfinder display. You can basically choose what you want to show up on that display. I don't really mess with it. Um, you know, if you push the info button, you, you can switch on what shows up. The screen brightness, I leave it at four. I had a person that had it like cranked up all the way up and then when they were looking at their photos, everything looked super bright. So he tried to underexpose on the camera and when he put the photos on the computer, it was a disaster. So I just think four works great. Three works great for the viewfinder. The screen, viewfinder color tone, two. If you do one, it starts to get warmer or colder and you, you, you start getting a false, a false color. So I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, fine tune, yeah, whatever. Magnification, if you want to magnify the, the zoom menus, the zoom, sorry, the uh, help menus. Um, HDMI, HDMI resolution, you have two options. So you have 1080 and auto. I will leave it at 1080 for most applications because 1080 uh, sends the signal automatically in 1080 to the, screen, to the computer screen, so or to the um, TV screen. If you leave it on auto, it's going to try to figure out what device you're plugged into, your camera's plugged into, and it's gonna try to figure out what's the optimal resolution to show. Um, so it's, it, takes a, it takes a while to basically get the information from the camera to the screen, and I think that's super annoying. And uh, it's just doing more thinking. It's trying to customize what it's showing to every single type of screen out there. But if you do it with 1080, it just says, forget it, I don't have to think, and it just sends the, sends the image to 1080 instantaneously. Uh, I leave the touch control standard, multifunction lock, I don't really lock it. The shutter, a shutdown, of course you wanna, you wanna make sure that that's down because if you take the lens off or anything and you shut down the, 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 the camera, you want that sensor protected, so you want the screen to come down and protect your precious sensor you spend so much money on. Um, why would you leave it open? if you're going to clean it. So if you need to clean the camera, clean the sensor, then you will switch it to open. So when you take the lens out, you have access to the sensor and you can give it a good clean. And then of course you have sensor cleaning. Do you want it to happen all the time? Automatically a power off and the answer is yes. You wanna clean your sensor as many times as you can. And that's the end of that. Let's go to number five. You have reset camera. This resets everything on your camera back to, back to factory settings. Um, custom shooting mode C1, C2, C3. These are actually very important. I have my C1 set up in a very specific way, which I will talk about in the next video, because it's the next menu. Um, in the custom functions menu, I'm gonna show you how I set up C1, but I will explain this to you now. In this setup menu number five, where it says custom shooting mode C1, C2, C3, the way that works is Whatever cam camera settings you have on right now, if you go to the setup menu and you go to five and you go to custom shooting mode C1 and you push it, it will say register settings. And you say, yes, I wanna register these settings. And it says, you wanna register to C1, C2 or C3. And then you can choose which one. I'm gonna cancel out of that. I have a very carefully crafted situation with my C1 because I have C1 set up as a 1.6 X crop factor. So I wanna be able to zoom in. I'll show you real quick, look at this. Here is normal mode shooting. Now, as soon as I push my multi-function button, which is right next to the shutter, right behind the shutter, if I click on it, it's gonna jump to my C1, whatever I set for C1, which is you know the custom settings for your camera one. Look what happens, ready? Boom, it goes straight to 1.6, okay? 
it goes it goes to 1.6 back to zoom back to wide angle 1.6 back to wide angle back to 1.6 that's awesome because if you're shooting and you're shooting wide angle and you don't want to have to switch the lens let's say right now I have a 35 1.8 you say you don't want to switch the lens you but you want to go into that portrait focal length like 100 millimeters or or you want to get more into that portrait um, zoom in more without having to change the lens you can I, I just push multifunction it goes straight to C1 and it gives me that 1.6x crop factor that you can find right here you can find it on camera one right there cropping aspect ratio right now it's a four thirds and if I switch to C1 okay I'm a C1 if I switch to and I go to menu, you can see it's set to 1.6. So how do you do this again? You grab your camera, when you, whenever you're ready to program something on C1, C2, C3, grab your camera, make all your changes that you want, set up your, set it up however you want. Then you go to menu, you switch, you, you jump over to, you jump over to set up the fifth menu in the setup uh, menu item click custom shooting mode choose it click register settings select that and then choose c1 c2 or c3 so that's how you do it and it will it will just remember all of that okay um, the copyright information i think it's nice to have your name i have my uh, the author as me and the copyright as me you could give the camera to somebody else and switch the author name to whoever the name is and then you, you can keep the copyright if it's your event but I just keep it the same um, that's it so there's nothing else there to really discuss and of course the firmware uh, this is where you go to actually update the firmware if you have it on a memory card put it in and then you go there and it will find it and it will it will do a firmware update for you but that's the end of the setup menu and then on the next video we're gonna go over the custom the, the custom settings going the custom settings right here custom functions over one two three four and five so stay tuned